A couple of months ago, I did a series of tutorials showing a really cool method where you could blend two objects together using the data transfer modifier and shrink wrap. And I've run into another situation where it's just incredibly useful. Imagine the condition where you've got a subdivision surface object, in this case, the shaver. I modeled this a couple of years ago when there were a couple of areas on it I just was never really fully happy about. And you want to add localized detail onto these curving surfaces. And this is an area that actually subdivision can be a little bit weak at. And so that's what we're going to look at in this video. If you've seen my other videos, you'll be familiar with this. But in this particular case, I'm going to highlight a couple of different ways that we can approach this because there is flexibility in how you use this functionality. So let's jump in and take a look at this model and specifically look at the area that I am concerned about that I'd like to revise. So I'm going to press the N key. I'm using the Edit Instance Collection add-on, which is awesome. Let's me jump in to this collection. And when we look here, I've got the side of the shaver and we've got localized detail that is added in here. And when we come in and look at this in a shaded preview mode, when you start looking at the highlight area, you can see that there's sort of shading wonkiness going on. And this is just an issue that you can run into when trying to put small localized detail into a subdivision surface object. And you can just see it's a little bit lumpy. The shading is a little bit lumpy. So let's take a look at how it is that we can use this technique to fix that. So the two ways that you could approach this is to model the detail as a separate object and then sort of project it onto the primary object and then blend the two surfaces together. So that's one way of doing this. And the other is to actually model it right into the geometry and then adjust the normals afterwards. So let's do the second method first where we just model the details right in. In order to do this second method where we have this geometry that's built into the mesh, we need to have a pristine mesh that we can draw pristine normals from to correct this. But we're also going to look at using shrink wrap and data transfer versus just using data transfer. Because in my first set of videos, I received a couple comments saying, hey, you really need to do it correctly and get the geometry into the correct place and not just mask poor geometry with a normal hack. I don't think this is a hack, but we're going to look at the benefits and drawbacks of each method. So the first thing that we want to do is come up to this empty. I'm calling the sidewall with ridges, but we need to create a, a, an original pristine version of this. So let's do this. Let's press, I need to enable my overlays. Shift and D, so I've created a duplicate and I'm going to hide the original. So we're working with just the duplicate. And we're going to call this sidewall source or original, something that clearly indicates what it is. And then we come in, let's also come down and just turn off subdivision services. So we're working directly with the geometry that, that we want to work with. So we need to actually remove the details. So this is something that you could come across if somebody gives you a model and it has some of these issues. You may have to deconstruct it just a little bit. Let's press the W key a couple of times and cycle to this mode right here, select circle. And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to quickly highlight around the area that I want to sort of fix and remove. So be kind of like this. I'm not worrying. I'm really worrying primarily about the perimeter. Okay. So we can press the X key to remove those and then select one polygon from each of these remaining islands and then just do a select length, which is Command L, and then press the X key to remove those faces. Now, Blender will reconstruct this for us. So edge mode, double click around this open edge. This is called a non-manifold edge, and then come up to face and then down to grid fill and it'll reconstruct that for us. So now I have a pristine surface from which I can pull good normals from. Let's come in and make sure we've re-enabled subdivision surfaces so that we have a good object. And I'm only just going to go to a level of two. 
if we come over into wireframe, we can see what that actually looks like. And I think there's going to be sufficient resolution. I don't think we need to go any higher than that. So let's turn back on optimal display. Okay, so this piece is never going to be rendered. It's just there to pull normals from. So we'll come back to this object. Let's come in and re-enter edit mode. So the first thing that we need to do is kind of figure out where the geometry is that's kind of wonky. And it's everything that where we can see these sort of triangular shapes, and it's going to blend into neighboring polygons. So I'm going to come in like this and select everything that I think is in an area that might be producing geometry that isn't optimal, meaning producing those visual artifacts. So we're just going to come in really quick and highlight all of this. There's no reason why you couldn't also pick these up here just to make it really easy. So we'll just go ahead and take all of this area. And there we go. Okay. Now we need to switch over into vertex mode because we need to save these as a vertex group. So let's come down to the data object properties and we're in vertex group. Go ahead and click new and let's just call this verts one and give it some name if you happen to want to give it a name, but critically remember to click assign. Okay. So now what we need to do is let's come back down. Let's leave edit mode and let's come back into shaded. And we need to come and do method one. We're going to use sort of the, the simplest of the, of the approaches here, of the two approaches we're going to use with this integrated geometry approach. So we're going to come over to edit and then data transfer. So all this is going to do is it's going to leave the geometry in its current position, but because this geometry is not producing the best shading, the normals are simply being calculated based on the orientation of each polygon, and each polygon is generate, being generated by the subdivision surface, where we have these inclusions of triangles and otherwise flat faces, and it's just not producing the optimal result. We select the object that we want. Actually, let's do this first. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because I don't want to see anything happening until we get this configured. So the source object is the object that I called source, the one that we just reconstructed. And we need to come down and also tell it to restrict itself to that verse one vertex group. So it's only doing those. We enable face corner data where we're wanting to use those. We're going to tell it to pull custom normals and we want to reset the mapping type. You can either use nearest corner of nearest face or nearest face interpolated. These two I've generally found to be the best. So we'll just come down here to face interpolated. Okay, so we've got it configured and let's come back up here, sort of get this view situated so that we can see some of the wonkiness pretty well. And we just come on and turn it back on and there it is fixed that for us. So this is the way that kind of fixes the shading in a cosmetic way. But based on what some people said was, Chris, you should use shrink wrap and actually put the polygons in the correct way and then let the shading be based on the corrected polygons. So, okay, let's do that method next. Before we do that, let me just turn this off one more time and turn it on and off so you can clearly see how that data transfer is pulling normals from that reconstructed mesh and just giving us a much better surface. But we're going to go ahead and remove that now because we're going to go the route of actually moving the individual geometry. Let's look at the subdivision mesh. We're going to turn off optimal display where it's actually going to pull each of the vertices and the polygons and move them to the correct position based on our reference source object to produce the smooth shading. But we are going to run into one issue that's going to make this a little bit more complex. It's not quite just as easy as doing that. So we're going to be able to reutilize the same vertex map that we created. So let's come to modifier and we're going to come to deform and then shrink wrap. Let's put shrink wrap. We're going to have mirror be the last thing that we do. And 
shrink wrap. Let's again turn this off so that we're not seeing anything happen until it's properly configured. So we pick the source object, the one we have named source that we constructed. We want it to only be affected with the verts one vertex map that we originally created. Let's switch back over into the shading mode kind of get it so we can see the visual wonkiness a little bit. And then down here in shrink wrap, let's just simply go enable it. And we get something actually pretty similar to what we had done before. It was moving all of those vertices to match up to the other vertices that we have. Now, one thing for this to work correctly for this method is you need to make sure that your subdivision levels are the same between the source object and this object that we're actually modifying. So let's come in and take a look at this now. You can see that maybe something about this approach is a little nebulous. Do you see how here it's a little bit ill-defined? It's not, it's just a little bit soft. This approach does pretty well for the bulk of the geometry, but it loses something here in this blended area. So it turns out the way that we fix that is by using the data transfer to pull normals. <laughs> so Let's do this. Let's jump into polygon edit mode and I'm going to double click to select this outer boundary. So we, the topology changes here for our detail and we need to come over and select those boundary vertices, come back down and we need to create a new vertex map for this because it's just those vertices that we want to correct. So we'll call these verts two and then four normals, something descriptive normals. If I can spell that, we don't want to make sure and assign. There we go. So leave edit mode and then we want to come back to our modifier stack. Let's collapse all of these and we're going to add under edit a data transfer again, making sure that it's up above mirror. Mirror is the last thing that we do here. And here, let's disable it temporarily, select our source object, and then we select verts to four normals, face corner data, we're explicitly pulling custom normals, and we just need to come down to face interpolated. And then when we come back up here and turn that on, do you see how that corrected that? And we've got, we're, we're pulling normals onto the cage mesh, which are then transferring to the subdivided mesh and giving us better topology. So it's a little bit more complex, but technically, like some people were saying, it is this it does produce a technically more accurate mesh because we're not sweeping the actual geometry under the rug by slapping better normals on them in most places. Now, if you export this, you can have all of these this modifier stack here flattened and applied so that you can actually export this to another application. So the second approach is to have separate objects that you're basically kind of faux attaching to the source object itself. So I can we can see here that I've got the original mesh, the, which is the side, the side wall as I'm calling it. And then I have separate objects all together for these details. So if we come here and we take a look at these, these were modeled based off this mesh. So the geometry is derived. But when we look, you can see that it's clearly not attached. So it's matched up to the cage, but not to the subdivided mesh of this sidewall. And that's what we need to happen for it to look right. So let's come in and generate vertex groups for the perimeter. So we select the perimeter here. One goes to vertex map mode, and then we just create, we'll call this verts one. Make sure a sign at one at uh, full weight. Okay. So now we come in and we add a deform of the shrink wrap and let's turn it off temporarily. We want it to shrink wrap to the source object, the sidewall that we're looking at here. And we want it to be restricted to the verts one. Okay, so when we turn that on, let's go ahead and leave edit mode. Let's turn off overlays. So we turn that on and we could see that that jumped 
that jump down. So that's good. In fact, if we come over here, we can look at the shading a little bit better. You can clearly see that it's producing a hard boundary. Okay, so that's what we're wanting to fix. So now we need to come in now that we've shrunk wrapped the perimeter of these design elements and we need to add a data transfer modifier. Okay, so we need to also come in, let's come down here and we need to create a separate vertex group for these also. So let's come back over here, back in so that we can see this. I actually just wanna duplicate this original vertex group and we'll, we'll take a look at that here in just a second why. So we'll come down here and we're gonna duplicate vertex groups and we'll call this verts2 because I'm gonna to wanna to modify the first one just a little bit here in a second. Okay, leave edit mode. And then we come back over to our modifier stack where we have data transfer. And then we need to, I'm going to turn it off. I don't want anything happening quite yet. Let's select our source, which is this background here. And then the vertex group verts two. That's all we want to affect. Okay, let's turn off our overlays again. Then we need to come down and specify vertex corner data, custom normals, and then we'll pick interpolated for this one. Okay, now that those are configured, we come over here, we turn that on, and you can see that boundary disappear as it's now pulling normal data for the transition zone. But if you look kind of carefully, we can see a little bit of a shading glitch right here. So let's do this. Let's come back over. Let's turn on our, our overlays, and let's come into edit mode. And what's happening is that these perimeter polygons are being dropped onto the surface. They're being shrunk wrap onto the surface here. But this next level of vertices aren't being adjusted at all. And we want them to get adjusted just a little bit so that they do. In fact, this is going to be kind of a challenge for me to get this sort of view so that we can really see this. So you kind of see, I can't take the clipping plane down anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to enable subdivision and then the shrink wrap in full edit mode. So we can really see this happening. So let's come down to this new loop that we have right here, this new loop, and let's come back down to the vertex group, which is verts one. And we want to add this to it, but we don't want to add it with the full weight because it'll just project it all the way down. So let's give it a weight of, let's say, 0.4, which is just sort of an intermediate weight, and click Assign, and that'll pull that down so it's partially affected by the shrink wrap. And you can play with it if you want it to be maybe not quite so strong. You can come in like that and just make small adjustments. Okay, so then when we leave Edit Mode, let's go back into this more full shaded. You can see that that now looks really good as it's blended, but it's still a separate object. So this is the other method that you could use. And it's just, it just goes about using the combination of shrink wrap and data transfer just a little bit different than the other method. But I wanted to show both of these to you so that you could really get a sense for what kind of power this has in terms of being able to blend multiple objects together.